Well, this is a continuation of the life and revelations of Anne Catherine Emmerich. I've uh, used a different microphone today. I hope you can hear me a little better. Um, I'm recording a, uh, here in a bookstore, so it's difficult to talk sometimes because there's a lot of noise and music overhead. My voice is still a little weak. I'm going to continue now with the life and revelations of Anne Catherine Emmerich. Because you see here the two volumes that you can obtain from several sources, Amazon, Tambooks.com, uh, Books a Million, a lot of other stores. Uh, these revelations are pretty lengthy, but I want you to know them because uh, they pertain to these, these very times we're living in. Uh, at the end of the, the revelations, I'm going to show you some of the evidence that we have for some things that are occurring, as she prophesied a long time ago. Again, you can obtain these books, if you like, from TAM books. Uh, here, as you see, a, a, either one volume, second volume, or both volumes together for $40. And they were covering and Catherine Emmerich, Section 3. Um, when we're going over her, her prophecies, uh, those were given to her by Jesus and Mary, both. Here she talks about the existence of purgatory. Her first, her first revelation on this topic includes the following. I was with my guide, she, she says, among the poor souls in purgatory. I saw their desolation, their inability to help themselves, and the little assistance they get from living. Remember, the Bible says somewhere that when you're dead, you'll be forgotten. Ah, the misery, the inexpressible. With contemplating their state, I saw a mountain separated from me from my guide. I sighed for him like one famished. I almost swooned with desire. I saw him on the opposite side, but I could not reach him. He said to me, See how thou sighest for help. The poor souls are always in the state in which thou art. He often took me to pray before caverns and prisons. I prostrated and I wept. With my arms extended, I cried to God for mercy. My angel encouraged me to offer all kinds of privations for the poor souls. They cannot help themselves. They are cruelly neglected. I often sent him to the angel of certain persons in suffering to inspire them to suffer their pains for them. They are instantly relieved by such offerings. They become joyous, so grateful. Whenever I do something for them, they pray for me. I am terrified to see the riches of the church holes out in such abundance, neglected, dissipated, and so highly and so lightly esteemed. While the poor souls are languishing for them. The second revelation, prayer most pleased to God, is that made for others, and particularly for the poor souls. Pray for them. If you want your prayers to bring high interest. Her third revelation. Poor souls suffer inexpressibly. The difference between the pains of purgatory and those of hell is this. In hell reigns only despair. While in purgatory the hope of deliverance sweetens all. The greatest moment, the torment of the damned, is the anger of God. Same some faint idea of his wrath may be formed from the terror of a defenseless person exposed to the attack of a, of a furious man. Number four. Last night I was in purgatory. It seemed to me I was taken into a deep abyss, a vast region, where I saw the sight filled me with sorrow, a poor soul so sad, so silent, yet with something in their countenance which tells me that the thought of God's mercy gives joy to their heart. Enthroned in the midst was the mother of God, more beautiful than I had ever seen her before. Then she said to him, her inquisitor, Dean Rinsing, one of the people who followed her, instruct your penitents to pray for, fervently for the poor souls of purgatory, for they in gratitude will pray for them in return. Pray for these poor souls is most agreeable to God, as it admits them to his presence sooner. Her fifth revelation. I went with my guide into a gloomy prison of souls, where I consoled on all sides. The souls are buried in darkness, all more or less so, some to the neck, others to the waist. They were in separate, though adjoining, dungeons, some tortured with thirst, others by cold, others by heat, unable to help themselves, sighing in, 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 in uh, un, uninterrupted torments. I saw the number delivered 
and the joy was inexpressible. They went forth as gray figures. They received for the short passage to a higher region the costume and distinctive marks of their state upon earth. They assembled in vast place above purgatory and closed as with a thorn hedge. I saw many physicians received by a procession of physicians like themselves and conducted on high. I saw a number of soldiers liberated, and the sight made me rejoice for the poor men slaughtered in war. I saw a few female religious, still fewer judges, but led out by blessed nuns were numbers of virginal souls who had wanted only an opportunity to, to consecrate themselves to the religious life. I saw some kings of olden times, some members of royal families, a large number of ecclesiastics and many peasants, among whom I saw some of my acquaintance, and others who by the costume seemed to belong to foreign lands. Each class was led on high and in a different direction by souls of their own condition in life, and, as they ascended, they were divested of their earthly insignia and clothed in a luminous robe peculiar to the blessed. I recognized in purgatory not only my own acquaintances, but also their relatives, whom perhaps I had never before seen. I saw in the greatest abandonment those poor souls, dear souls who have no one to think of them. Among those who forget them are so many other brethren in the faith who neglect prayer. As for such souls that I pray the most, it is for such souls that she prays the most. Then I saw many of the poor souls whom I had known in life and whom, with whom I had dwelt dealings, uh, looking wistfully after me from purgatory, and I understood the difference between true and false sympathy. They followed me with sad eyes, repenting of many things. Now that I was forced to leave them, they were citizens of the little city. And those revelations of this section, number three, for Aunt Catherine Emick. Something I wanted to show you before we leave this are a few of the websites and things I've seen that kind of confirm what she's been talking about. Firstly, here comes Russia, as she promised. Remember last time we talked about Prussia, uh, meaning Russia, the southern border of Russia, invading, preparing now for electronic warfare, as you see here. Then two who prepares for that? Well, that's the Polish. He stresses the government commitment to strong army. They're preparing to their armies to fight in oncoming Russians. We're at the borders. And everybody sees uh, areas in Ukraine will proceed towards Poland. Indeed, they'll go all the way to western Germany, as you'll see later on, as Anne Catherine Emmerich describes. Uh, the battle will be fought all the way, all the way to western Germany. Then, too, um, you see here um, that uh, there are now economic concerns. The fear grows as China's huge jet bubbles will spark a devastating global crash. All these things are outlined and, and outlined the letter I sent out to you to, later today. Uh, things that uh, Planet X, 7X, this is the website you want to see, planet7x.net. Gil Broussard, who's a, a Nibiru researcher, says it's definitely coming. And he's on his own website. You can catch him on several uh, uh, YouTube channels, uh, like those of uh, Steve, Stephen Olson, uh, Deep Earth Watch, M Lord God, uh, the uh, uh, other ones, uh, uh, which I can't remember now. But uh, the link for the uh, project, Leak Project, L E A K Project, and he describes the oncoming uh, planet Seven X uh, Nibiru, Nemesis Complex, Nemesis. Parada, uh, Harrington, Nibiru, uh, and Herculobus, all the, the planetary system is approaching pretty rapid speed, which NASA has confirmed, by the way. They finally confirmed it, uh, and they won't tell you how far it is, but they, they say it's a, a brown dwarf star which is approaching us. It's going to be here. Be ready. Get off the coastlines. Another thing I, I, I wanted to tell you is that Yellowstone is something that's uh, been eminent, uh, ready to, to, to explode. But so too, the Snake River has its own volcano, which they think is the biggest threat to America. 
You can see these are all the letters I've, I've given you in some of these. And then um, um, uh, you want to find out what area of the country you're most safe in. Uh, so I'll present something to you later about who you want to contact regarding this and what books to obtain. Uh, I recommend Joel Skousen, S-K-O-U-S-E-N. Joel spelled J-O-E-L. His book, Strategic Location, Relocation, will give you uh, some uh, ideas about where to go in your particular state or country. And you can get his book, by the way, on InfoWars, I-N-F-O-W-A-R-S dot com, InfoWars dot com. Look for the book from Joel Skousen called Strategic Relocation. That's all I have for today. I'll be contacting you at uh, the next uh, installment uh, another time. Thank you.